everybody uh, welcome to the video and we're just going to discuss some page navigation in the universe of windows platform so first of all what i've actually done is that i've just simply created a button here uh, in the grid and there you go uh edit. its name is next page the content and the horizontal alignment to the left margin i've just given that and 10 points and then you have vertical alignment to the top, name button navigate and click event hello already created that is button navigate and script click which means that if you simply just go here and double click over this so you would have the event handler so what we're going to do is that we're just going to create a new page and we're just going to simply navigate so there you go, I'll simply go to the products uh, add a new product, new item and blank page, simply name that blank page or whatever you want to name that and add it here so what I'm going to do is that I will simply go to uh, the main page example to see us. We'll say this dot uh, frame dot navigate. Uh, I will say type off, type off, and that is blank. Sorry, blank page one. There you go. So now what will happen is that uh, it will just navigate from the main page to the blank page. Uh, let's run it and see what actually happens. So idly uh, it should navigate to the next page but we're not having any content. We can just put some dummy text block or text box here and uh, we can just show some data so that we know that we are on the next page but for sure there is no content uh, on the next page, the, uh, the blank page uh, one dot sample. But we're having a button in main page sample, so we can differentiate between uh, both of those. So it's deploying, and uh, I hope to see that output. And <laughs> loading symbols, running the profiler, and there you go. So sorry for the debugging line. You can just remove that uh, by going to main, uh, by going to app.xaml.cs and turning off the debugger. Uh, so there you go. If you just simply click on the button, so it navigates to the next page. But the only thing here happen is that we only have one window in UWP, which means that the frame changes. It's not the window that changes. So. Uh, we got to capture that uh, currently and we're just going, uh, we need to create a scheme that uh, catches that. So ideally what should happen is that either we should have a back button here with, uh, on which we should click and just uh, uh, and it navigates back to the main page. But uh, if we do that, so it's not a good scenario for I would say the mobile devices as, as you're targeting UWP so you are going to target a lot of devices that include some desktop, tablets and also the mobile devices that are having a pre-default back button um, as hardware or software or whatever you say or whatever device you're having it really depends on the device you're having but you ideally have a back button and given by the operating system. So uh, we need to use that. So we need to come up with a scheme that caters both the tablets, the desktops and uh, the mobile devices as well. So what we are just going to do is that we just need to uh, change uh, some of the data. Uh, by data I means that some of the code. Uh, so I'll simply close that, stop the debugging and uh, simply just go to uh, app.sample.cs there we go and in app.sample.cs first thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm just going to enable the disable the frame rate counter for that I need to just set the enable frame rate counter to false Okay, so uh, now we just need to cater that back button or we just want to cater that uh, frames that we're having in a single window so that we can navigate back. So for that what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write some code and uh, we have a root frame here which is actually a frame by which I mean that uh, we are having a stack of uh, meaning a stack that which frame is on the top and which frame is on the bottom so it's more of a, like a data structure of a stack so what I'm going to do is that uh, root frame dot navigated and I would simply create a routed event so tap tap and there you go and we're having a new method here which is root frame underscore navigated so what I'm going to do is that system system 
system navigation manager and just go here let's go to the yeah, system navigation manager that we get for current view dot app view back button visibility is equal to we have a frame here and uh, we can say that we're having it from the center and uh, if that's the case so it should have a method that can go back okay that, that's probably actually and uh, uh, what I can do is that I can check that property and if I simply go to uh, sorry for that can go back so it's basically a boolean so I can use an uh, if statement as well so there you go and I can say app uh, view back visibility dot visible and colon app view visibility dot collapse there you go so this is a single line of code that we are just going to write to cat that so moreover you need to implement the back button request event to do that uh, put the code in the on launched method below the windows current content uh, so there is a windows current content is equal to root frame so what we're going to do is that uh, system navigation manager uh, dot get for current view dot back requested that is a routed event so plus equal to tab tab uh, which says that now back is requested so this method will be called so uh, what actually would happen is that uh, I can write a very simple code here so that if there is a frame and uh, uh, the root frame can go back so we'll just simply go back for that what we're going to do is that we say frame root frame is equal to window dot sorry window dot current dot content as frame and next thing we just could do is that if root sorry at root frame dot can go back so we'll simply just need to say root frame dot go back and with that we dot handled is equal to true so there you go so uh, I believe uh, we can just try this and uh, let's see what happens there you go uh, when I just click on the button so it gives me the back button here so it can go back which means that it just moved back to the previous page so now we're able to maintain that but uh, the good thing about this is that this would only happen when you're on the desktop or the tablet so for example if you're not on tablet or, or you're running on a simulator of uh, Windows 10 that I'm not gonna show you right now in this video uh, so what is actually gonna happen is that if you click on the next page so there will be a back button and when you click that you can go to the back page button on tablets it's just going to show uh, the back button here and you can simply just click on that to move back uh, to where you were actually so this was a basic navigation and i would say this is how you can uh, implement the back button or the back navigation or maintain a stack of navigation in uwp that's a bit different from the previous versions of universal uh, windows development as things have changed in uwp i hope you get the things well and you implement that and practice that if you're having any question related to uh, 
navigation you can surely comment it down below and uh, you can reach me uh, via email or any social network you like and for this it's uh, that's all and I hope you just like that and don't forget to share it to your peers if they are learning UWP or they're working UWP or need a better understanding of uh, navigation. Thank you for your time and see you next time for the next video.